What is up? Daniel here with the Virtual Robotics Studio, and we are back for the next video. In this video, we are going to get our motor mount assembled and attached to our upper structure. But before we start building, we got to give our special thanks to First and Argosy Foundation for making this all possible. All right, what we need now is the motor mount brackets. There are three different pieces that we're looking for here. So one is kind of this big round uh, plate. It's got two big holes in it and a bunch of smaller holes. And then we have two that are the same. Um, so that's what we're looking for here. These ones, I don't know, they kind of look like a W. We got big scallops cut out of them. So there should be two that look like that. We're going to need a lot of little hardware for this one. So uh, this is going to be number 10 bolts to help us assemble it. So we need number 10 bolts. Uh, these are 1032 by 1.5 inches long, and I'm using socket heads. You can have a different head style. You could have a button head. That would work fine. Um, and again, if you're using metric hardware, that's fine. If you want to do uh, quarter inch hardware instead, you might have to drill some of the holes on our plates a little bit bigger. Um, but that would also work. Okay, uh, we're also going to need some of these spacers. Now, there's a bunch of different ways or places you can buy these spacers from. I bought mine from McMaster Car uh, from the part number that was in the additional hardware list. But lots of vendors sell these. You can probably also find stuff at the hardware store. The key is we need um, some spacers that will fit on the number 10 bolts. So these should um, slide on and fit onto the bolts that we've got here. Uh, and we need them to be... Uh, this one is 0.625 long or 5 eighths inch, inch long. So our, uh, our bigger, taller ones here are 5 eighths. And then our shorter ones over here are a quarter of an inch. Right? So we need uh, 625 and 0.250 for those. Um, you might have to use like a bunch of 1 8 inch spacers and stack them up. You can also 3D print these. The hole just has to be big enough for a bolt, so like 0.2 inches or so. Um, and then the height, we just want to get it as close to accurate as we can. Okay, also for this, we're going to need a couple different drill bits. We're going to do most of it with our either 3 16 or number 7 drill bit. Number 7 here because we're doing the bolts this time instead of rivets, so sometimes you want that extra little bit of space. Um, and we'll need a 7 30 seconds drill bit for some quarter inch holes that we're going to drill but not use in this step. Obviously, we need our drill. I'm going to need a calipers or some other ruler or measuring device so we can align this when we go to put it in the frame. Safety glasses, of course, and we need, uh, I'm going to use a bin just so that I don't lose track of all my hardware here. All right, so for the first step, we can get rid of this frame. We're going to use that at the end when we're ready to attach stuff. Same thing with the drills. Same thing with our uh, calipers. We do need the hardware, or we do need the um, tools to be able to tighten number 10 bolts. So in this case, that is going to be a 3 8 wrench and a 5 30 seconds hex key. Um, and remember, you can use the angled one or you can use the handled one, whatever you have. OK, so we're going to have a scallop plate on top, then our round plate or, I don't know, rounded uh, rectangle plate. And then on the bottom, we're going to have another one of the scallop plates. Now. These holes in the middle, like if you line them all up in a row like this, that's these lines in the center. So this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole are going to line up. So this is going to end up lining up like that. And then this is going to sit on top of this one, lining up the same way. And what we can see, too, is when we do that, when we move this in and make those center holes line up, we also get these outside edges right here and right here are going to line up with this hole and this hole. So those are kind of the holes that we're working with. Again, it's going to be these ones here. Uh, sorry, no. It's going to be these ones here, not these ones here. All right. We'll wipe that off as much as we can. Yep, that one. OK. And we can attach these um, one at a time, uh, kind of. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to start with one of our um, pointed plates. And all I'm going to do is drop bolts into those four holes. Okay, so this one's good. I find that it works best to work kind of like sideways like this because then the bolts don't fall out, um, but you can still kind of see what you're doing. If you're doing it upside down, you got to hold a lot of stuff up in place. All right, then on each of these bolts on the other side of this plate, we're going to add those 
spacers. And this should be the longer ones, the 0.625 or 5 eighths of an inch spacer. And just go ahead and slide those on all of the bolts here. Okay. Then we're ready to attach our next plate. Now this, I guess this is the trick because we've got all of these bolts at once. If you're lucky, you'll be able to get everything lined up and dropped in. If not, if that, this, this method is not working for you, um, you can kind of do it one at a time. You just have to slide the spacer in and sort of hold the spacer in place uh, while you pass the bolt through. Okay, so that's the first step here. Then um, we are going to add the next set of spacers. And so here, again, if you have more hands, you could have one person holding this together. Then you could actually flip it upside down and work on it so the other spacers don't fall off or you know, have it kind of on that angle so things don't fall apart. I think if you're really quick too, you can tip this down um, and have it rest on the table and now my bolts can't fall through either. So now I can go back through and add on this side, we're gonna do the little quarter inch spacers on top of each of our bolts here. And this, of course, is going to flip over. You'll know this one's in the right spot because when you drop it on, it's going to match on the back edge and the top and bottom edges with the other pointed plate. And at this point, we're going to just go ahead and start finger tightening a 1032 nut, nylock nut, onto here. And I'll just get that started on all four of these. Then it won't be able to fall apart on me. And then we can move it however we need to tighten them down. There we go. All right. So I'm going to tighten these down, but I'm not going to tighten them all the way. I want to leave this a little bit loose. That's going to make it easier um, to go ahead and attach it onto the frame of the robot in a minute. So we're going to tighten these down. And actually, if you tighten it all the way so it's tight, that's fine. Then what you need to do is just back it off like, I don't know, about half a turn so that you still have some play there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all four of these bolts. And the idea is just if it's tightened all the way down, depending on the exact height of the spacers and stuff like that, it might not fit onto the one inch. Like this area, this gap inside here should be one inch. But if we tighten it down so much and the spacers were a little too small or we crush the aluminum a little bit, it might not be one inch anymore and then it won't fit on our one inch box that we're gonna attach it to um, in the next step. So we get that and get this one close. But by getting them close to tightened up, it's going to help align things a little bit for us. And it's going to make it easier once we're in position uh, to tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, that's pretty good. Let's bring up our big frame piece from before. And what you want to do is find the cutout, find the hole where you can reach through. That is where this is going to go. And here's the key. This, the two pointed pieces are going to go onto this one inch bar. And if it doesn't slide on, loosen your bolts up a little bit more. But you should be able to kind of drop it in and wiggle it and get it to go on. And the other thing that we care about is, remember, we have the big spacers here and then the small spacers. The small spacers, and in the, the way that I attached it, the nuts, should be on the, closer to the plastic. So those are going to be on the bottom right next to the plastic. And then the tall spacers and this plate should be on top of the plastic. They should be on the top of the bar. OK, so let's see. We can kind of look in here. We've got big spacer, so the pointed plate, big spacer, and then a round plate. And then underneath the round plate is the small spacer. And our question now is, where does this attach on the frame? We have a little bit of play here, right? It can move up and down inside our cutout, depending on how big your cutout shape was. We got to figure out where to align the top of this to uh, be able to um, you know, have it attached in the right spot. And the answer is 1.25 inches. So I'm going to take my calipers. I'm going to set them to 1.25 inches, or 1 and a quarter inches. And if I, let's see get a guess for where that's going to be. It's going to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to go ahead and color that in so we can see the scribe mark. And then I will go ahead and scribe at 
Okay, so that line is where we're trying to line up the top of this bracket. And one of the things we can do is, as we kind of get it in the right spot, and if you have an extra set of hands, um, it's probably a little bit easier for you, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down now, all the way. And sometimes, depending on, again, I mean, there is some tolerance in how thick your aluminum bars are, and there is some tolerance in the spacers and all of that. So I found sometimes that when I tighten this down, it gets a little bit, yeah, so it's snugging up. I can still move it, but it's getting pretty tight on the bar. And I can use that sort of as a pseudo clamp to help keep it lined up. I'm gonna use some real clamps too, but it's gonna be easier now for me to get it lined up, I think, and have it not shift on me. So our goal here is to get it lined up on that line. That looks pretty good. And then we want to be um, flat on the outside edge. And so I'm not quite flat yet. I'm gonna grab a square and some uh, clamps to be able to help put this together. And I'm gonna use the square here on the outside edge just as that's the surface I wanna be able to pull this plate out to. And then same thing on the bottom. You might notice it's hitting, we had this bracket up here, and it's hitting that bracket as well when we try to pull the stuff out. So that's gonna also help line up that bottom plate. So right now I'm a little bit too far, so I'll use the square to kind of push it in. And again, if you're having trouble doing this because it doesn't move easily enough, you might have to loosen the bolts back up a little bit, um, and all of that is okay. All right, so I think I'm pretty flat there, all the way through, that feels pretty good. And again, I like to feel with my fingers because I think you can feel a smaller gap with your fingers. But that is in good shape. And it's not really moving on me because, again, of those bolts sort of being pseudo clamps for me. But now we're going to need to actually clamp it. So I'm going to grab some of my quick ones here. And I'll do two. Okay, and we are going to drill through these holes to attach, um, to attach this on. And there are still a lot of holes that you can see. So the holes we're looking for are the very topmost hole and the very bottommost hole. They're also smaller. These holes here are a little bit bigger. We're going to use just the top one here for something else in a second. And you can, in theory, drill and rivet here. Um, you could drill from the other side, maybe, if you have a small enough drill and rivet. But it's going to be very hard to drill this top hole up here uh, and be able to rivet that. So if you're trying to use rivets here, you might even have to take the whole thing apart to get this piece riveted on. So that's one of the reasons why I am not going to use rivets on this step. I'm going to use bolts. But we've got some things that we have to watch out for um, with our bolts. So. I'm going to go ahead and put my number seven drill bit here in the drill. And here's the problem. When I go to drill through here, if I'm on an angle, when I pop out on the other side, it might not pop out through the hole that's already there. So we need to drill this hole as straight as possible. Unfortunately, our hole structure here is not going to really fit in most drill presses easily. If you can get this fixtured up and use a drill press or a mill or something like that to drill the straight hole, go for it. Um, but we're going to have to do our best to drill the hole straight through. Um, there is the possibility, if your drill is small enough, that you could drill this hole from this side and then come back around and drill this hole from this side and then you can kind of use those holes as a guide to go all the way through and then have the bolt line up. But I think for me, it's actually a little bit too short and it's probably not going to work. So we're going to just do our best to drill as straight as possible. Um, another thing is it might help to start with a drill bit that's a little smaller, to start with a 3 16th drill bit and drill through. Uh, and then after you find out which way you made a mistake, you can open it up to that number seven drill bit, but try to find a slightly better angle um, to fix that. All right, so let's see. Actually, that's what I think I'm gonna do. Let me grab another drill bit here. And let's see. Yep, okay, so we have both now. A number seven, I'll leave down here. We'll start with a 316th drill bit. 
And this, we have to follow all the same rules we had from before, which is I can see kind of for myself this direction back and forth, but it's harder for me to see this direction. So get another person on the side that's looking. Also, because this is on an angle, it's even harder to sort of track what direction you're drilling. So using a square is going to help a lot to sort of track that angle. Um, and then this way, I think, is easier to see without the square. Another thing you can do, and maybe we'll go ahead and try that. We'll see if it works on the table, is if I can get it set hanging off this way, now um, it's straight again. So I think that's worth doing. Let me get some of the speed clamps here, and we can clamp this down onto the table. Make sure that the holes you're drilling are off the edge of the table, though, so you don't drill into the table. OK, and probably in this case, you might still want somebody holding this down so it stays nice and flat. I'll hold it. I guess I'll try to hold it up because that's the side I'm on. And again, we just need to try to drill this hole as straight as possible. Um, so same rules apply. Have some extra somebody watching the opposite direction for you. And I'm going to just go through one wall, right? And then we stop and we reassess. So let's drill through this first wall. I'll do the very bottom hole here first. So we stop, and now we're going to reassess. Make sure everybody's happy with the angle here. And I'm even going to put this up so I have an extra reference point. So we get happy with both angles. And when we're kind of happy with both angles, then we got to go. OK, and let's see how that one went before we move on. So what we're going to look at now is, on the back side, how close was my drill to the hole that was already there. And that's not bad. That is, that is clean through. I'm, I'm kind of dragging on one edge here on this back side. I'm kind of dragging on this inside edge just a little bit. But I mean, if the drill bit goes all the way through and looking at the hole down here, it still looks relatively round. So that's how you'll know you, know, you were kind of lined up well when you went through. Um, if it looks good, you could try to see if the bolt goes through. And if your bolt goes through easily, then you know, you're good. You don't even have to go to the next size bigger hole. You can just stop right there. So that one went in, no problem. And I'm always going to, just like when we were riveting, we're always going to do one fastener at a time. So we'll, we'll drop that bolt in. Let's get it started here. And then we'll go ahead and tighten that bolt down. And we can tighten this bolt down all the way. It's going to act as another clamp. It's going to help hold everything together. Um, it does feel like, and I don't think this is too big of a problem, but it does feel like because I hit that edge of that hole, this slid a little bit. This moved a little bit on me. Um, but I don't think it's going to be enough to matter. So I can feel there's a tiny, tiny gap here um, from where it was. So actually, if you get that, we can probably fix that to a certain extent. Let me go ahead and take this bolt out. And let's go ahead and try the next size drill bit. We'll go to that number 7, which is good clearance for a number 10 bolt. And we'll go ahead and this time, it doesn't really matter. The holes are already there. So we're kind of just following through what, what was already done. So I'm not going to worry about getting it flat. I'm still going to pay attention to try to drill straight. But um, the drill bit, once you go through that first hole, get it lined up on your next hole uh, before you start drilling. And it'll kind of do the work for you. Now, that we've done that, we should be able to shift this a little bit and have the holes still work. So now what I'm going to do is drop the bolt in, uh, and I'll get the nut started on the other side. But before I tighten this down now, you can see I have some room to wiggle this back and forth. 
the size of that bolt hole. So I'm going to just bring it back until my edge is kind of flat. And it might not still be perfect, but you should be able to adjust it a little bit here. And then let's go ahead and just tighten it down. So this looks like a good spot. Okay. Then, let's switch back to the smaller drill bit. So I'm going back to my 3 16 And I'm going to take this back into better drilling position. Oh, I can't go on the bolt heads. And just also remember too that this is not perfectly flat because on this edge where I'm clamping it, I'm clamping the aluminum to the table, but back here we have um, the plastic and then we have the rivet head sticking underneath. Um, so I guess I'm on the plastic and the aluminum here, but on this side, the rivet heads will make it tip up a little bit no matter what. So it's pretty close to flat, but you still have to make sure your reference is done to either the plastic, which is where I'd put this for my first hole, or any of the metal pieces, because those are what are actually, you know, we're lined up with. So in this case, you know, same thing. Maybe I can get it. Yeah, we'll go on the plastic again over here. And same process. I'm going to drill through the first step. Then we're going to reassess and make sure we're straight before we go the rest of the way through. Looks pretty good. Okay, first step is done. Now we're going to reassess, make sure we're happy with our angles. And then let's try it. Okay. That one I think did the same thing. I missed by just a little bit, so when I went through, my plates shifted over. So I'll try to actually kind of, let's bring the plates back just a tiny bit. And so we're back kind of flush. I'll go ahead and reclamp it. Maybe even throw a second clamp on to help stop it from shifting, if we can. And let's switch up to our bigger drill bit here. So up to that number seven. All right, and then let's follow this hole through one more time. Okay, let's unclamp everything. And if you don't have a number seven drill bit, um, you can kind of go to the next, if you have the next fractional size up from 3 16 So 3 16 would be what, 6 30 seconds? So if you have a 7 30 seconds drill bit, um, that would be pretty close and work as well. All right, bolt goes in. Once again, there is some amount of play back and forth up here. Uh, so I'm going to just try to keep it as flat as possible before I tighten it. And this looks pretty good. That did not start. OK, there we go. Now we're on it. And that's good. All right, so this is in. It's not moving anywhere. Once again, you can double check now that you're still pretty close to your 1.25 inch line. Or go ahead and measure again to see if you are at about 1.25 inches. I'm 1.241. So that's going to be close enough for me. Um, make sure that these holes are open. This is where we're going to end up attaching the motors that are going to drive wheels here that launch our, our notes or our game pieces. Um, and that's it. We should be good. One more thing, I guess, if you're running into trouble or you were running into trouble setting this up, if you can't move this up high enough, you may need to cut some more of this plastic away. If your cut was not quite in the right spot, you may need to cut some of the plastic away. If you ever have to do that, um, sometimes it helps to remove it, although this hole is a little bit hard to drill out. So that's something that you can do. It's not in the plans um, or in the instructions, but that's something you can do if you need to. So this hole right here, uh, we did a rivet, 
and you can't really get to it. It's blocked by this box now to be able to go in and work on that hole. So it might be, this might be a hole that you want to switch out, this hole here, and the same one on the other side might be holes that you want to switch out to, um, to bolts so that you could take it off if you needed to and make some adjustments. If you do have to drill this one out, um, you're pretty much stuck. You're going to have to undo the rivets on the side here um, and the rivets on the side here and take the whole back plate away. Then you can get in there. Um, that said, once everything is in and in the right spot, like I think mine is, I don't think that you will ever really need to work on that rivet again. Um, and if you're in a pinch, if you're in a hurry, and you just need to put another rivet in, you can find the spot that like you can go the highest as possible with your riveter. So like I could probably rivet, you know, like here-ish um, and not much higher, somewhere around there. What you could do is try to drill a hole there. And because it's a short hole, even if I have to drill on a little bit of an angle, that's OK. Uh, and then you can throw a rivet in a little bit lower. And that won't be quite as good as having that rivet right at the very top. Um, but that would work if you were in a rush to get this thing fixed to go out to a match or something like that. All right. That is it. Our um, motor mount is in and attached. Next step, I think we're going to build the opposite wall. Um, but we're getting pretty close to finish on, finished on this thing. OK, we are coming back to make a little correction here. So you'll notice if you look at the robot, we've got extra stuff attached. We've got some wheels. We've got our uh, launcher rail already attached to the robot. That is because I was talking about how eventually we were going to have to use this hole on the bracket and drill it through. We didn't do that. So we're going to come back. We're going to do it now so you can do it at the right time. Um, and on this plate, that top hole is a uh, quarter inch hole or seven, uh, 1760 force. We're going to drill that hole through. We want to do our best to drill this straight through because there is a matching hole on the bracket on the back side. So once again, all of the tricks that we've used in the past to drill as straight as possible we should do. You should probably still take this in and mount it uh, so it's more level. Uh, so that you can see that when you're drilling. But because I have all these motors and stuff in the way, it's going to be pretty hard for me to do that. So I'm going to have to do mine uh, back up here. And I'm just going to have to do my best to match the angle when I drill. So let's do it. So it still applies. Drill through the first surface. Reline everything up before you go through the back. OK, that looks close enough. We made it through the back hole. It is not too big of an oval. So that should be all set. Um, as long as the hole goes through, the straighter it is, the easier it is going to be when we attach that cover on here later. Um, but as long as your hole is making it through, you're probably going to be all set. So we're done with this video. We'll see you in the next one. And before we go, let's give a special thanks to FIRST and Argosy Foundation for making this all possible. <laughs>